Hello, my name is Robbie Sko, and today I'll be sharing some tips that have helped me get better at teaching online lessons for multiple instruments. For it could be, you know, some guitar. No, adding on different overlays if you want. For keys, which we talked about in the past. And yeah, some general tips for getting your audio set up and running. One big thing that has helped me, guys, I learned a lot as, as uh, we've gone through more and more online lessons is that a lot of people have been tripped up with the audio and like getting their audio right. And one thing that helped me a lot was using Total Mix. So any RME interface comes with Total Mix and it's an amazing software. It looks like this actually. And one thing I really love about this is you have such control of like how you can grab a different audio and bring it different places. So this is Total Mix and it comes with any RME interface. I happen to have the RME Fireface UFX2. You can get a, a smaller one if you don't need as many inputs or a, a newer one, but I love that. Look at why I can just click on this main and this is all of these channels that are happening to my main speakers. And I could give a fuller demonstration on this if you'd like, but they have a great YouTube channel kind of outlining different things. But what I do for when I'm teaching online lessons is I send this AES channel. That's what's actually going to my students and like I can have my students on, for example, I have this Zoom channel for them. I have different channels for Premiere, for regular desktop audio, such as YouTube, Ableton coming out of a separate output, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So that's really helpful. That's really saved me a lot of headache because before I was using all of these kind of virtual routing things, but and the um, Total Mix just made it wonderful. And yeah, I can even send things to different speakers, to the subwoofer. So yeah, it's really powerful. And the next thing on the uh, software and big time, Ableton Live, I love to use for teaching and you can use any DAW really. And one thing that helped me separate this from when I'm using it for recording or composing music or working on songs with the band versus when I use it for teaching is I like to set it up with the monitor set to in. So what I mean by that is over here, like typically, let's say I was playing the piano and I would have the monitor set to auto and then I would arm this. And then that would turn it on. But instead, when I teach, I like to set this monitor to in so I can consistently have this piano on, right, I have this piano on, ready to go. And then if my guitar is also set to monitor in, I can just go over to the guitar, grab that, and that is ready to go. And if these immediate camera switches are interesting to you, I have videos on how I set up um, the keynotes like this with a great app called Cordy, which you can get the link in the description, or the guitar, how I set up the different angles and things like that. You can add in overlays very easily with free program OBS. So yeah, check out some of those other videos if you're interested in that. But today, talking more about the audio. So back to that. And one thing I also love for canceling out some background noise is this Bruce Free right here, which is a noise cancellation. And you see right now it is on, I have it on the guitar as well. So here's the guitar with Bruce Free on, but if I, and if I take it off, wow. wow. Yeah, all that noise is, is there from the cable, from the jack. Wow, wow. I'm gonna turn it on. Whew. Beautiful. And it works very simply, right? So I just take this, just hold it to create that noise profile. Yeah, and then it learns what you want to cancel out. Beautiful. And it's also useful for voice and things like that as well. So definitely recommend that. I just have a very simple chain here on this guitar, just a little tuner, Bruce Free. And then I really like this digital amp uh, by Neural DSP, the archetype Corey Wong. Yeah, amazing, amazing amp here. And, and one thing that's nice about using, using uh, DAW to teach piano but of course you have so many options with different keyboards you can use i have the gentleman here i i, I could also you know pull up keyscape a number of different uh, beautiful keyboard instruments and then switch to if they're working on 
uh, electric piano sounds, organ sounds, synth sounds. I can quickly switch to that to, to kind of show them more like the exact sounds from the record and help them develop that with, with whatever they have. And yeah, within the piano, I can, like I mentioned, you can have different instruments. So I can just switch to, for example, an organ sound. And right now I'm showing you this display mode, but you know, for when I was teaching, I could just switch an OBS over to, for example, a scene that'll show, that'll show keys like this. Right? And then, yeah, I have it, I have it set up. So each of those different instruments are being sent to Cordy, like the piano could show up there. And then if I switched over to so the organ, the, the organ will be set, showed over there. And then if I switch over to the piano, that would also be shown there. And the last thing I'll share, I do also have a full setup for drums where I, like, I go over to this drum set and I have another camera and another microphone going over there. But for when I'm, for example, I also teach production lessons, I kind of just have this pad set up and I really like and can recommend this um, drum pad setup, which gets Addictive Drums 2 from Excellent Audio to work really well with the Ableton Live push. So it's this uh, donation based, I think it's a plugin or it's called Addiction Ad Addictive Drums 2 Suite or Sound Suite. And I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's really great, and the developer is awesome. I reached out to him for when I had questions getting it installed, and then once I got it installed, you can see that I was able to get um, like the push set up like this, and it has these uh, knobs here. Oof, gotta get a, get a <laughs> better camera for this so you can see. So it has this nice setup that's pretty similar to like a drum rack, even though it's addictive drums. Yeah, so it's useful to have like some nice pads right there, ready to go. And this great spank a new plugin on Knock from Decap. Love it. That's great, right? And then without it. With it. Uh, that's very cool if that's knock and then also with the addictive drums to sweet that i mentioned you have all these different controls like intensity controls kind of gives you even more control than like the velocity curves on the push you can dive into what's given within addictive drums too and kind of get yourself dialed in there so that's really great but essentially this template here i just have drum pads pianos guitars also bass so i have a separate channel for for bass we're going to add different um bass effects onto there. And then, yeah, over here I have this um, shotgun microphone right here. Uh, hey, yeah, there, there's that microphone right there. And then I also have, in the past, experimented with setting up with just like a SM58, so that's right here. Even SM7B ended up getting annoying. But um, yeah, if anyone has any specific questions, I know we opened a lot of different cans here, but some of you guys have reached out to me about uh, the OBS sound and yeah, total mix effects, totally what I recommend. And yeah, I love getting Ableton Live to just send into that. And I have the voice and Ableton and the YouTube audio, whatever else I need to use to help teach a great lesson on there. So if that helps you, that's great. And if you have any questions, let me know. And if you're interested in online lessons on any learning of these instruments or any of this tech and music stuff, Definitely let me know. I have a link down in the description and I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Take care.